All right, so since I've been using this computer vision system so much in the physics lecture series, I thought it would be good to do a quick tutorial on how to use the Open Computer Vision Library to track objects in a very basic way. And we're going to be doing this in Python because that's the easiest way to use the OpenCV library. You can use it in C++ if you prefer, and you can even get wrappers to use it in other things like MATLAB or Octave, uh, but it's going to be easiest to use it in Python, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's a little bit long of a uh, script to sort of do it line by line, so we're just going to uncomment things line by line uh, as we go through the script here and explain how everything works. So. Uh, as always with Python, we have to start by importing all of the libraries. First and foremost, we need to import the Open Computer Vision Library, uh, which is CV2, uh, because the original OpenCV is maintained as a legacy package. But, uh, you know, CV, CV2 at this point is well over 10 years old. We've been on the second version. Uh, and to install that, uh, you can see my errors from previous incorrectly entered commands, uh, you just do pip install OpenCV-Python is going to tell me I already have it installed. Yeah, requirement already satisfied. Um, and likewise with NumPy, uh, which we're, we're going to want. Uh, and also matplotlib is a very useful library for creating uh, data visualization plots, whatnot. Uh, I'm going to import CSV, although we're actually just going to use NumPy for our CSV in this example. And then finally, uh, from scipy.signal, we're going to use the savgol filter, which that's just sort of a extra little accessory that we're going to use to smooth some things out, but it's not really necessary. Uh, what you really, what you really need are map, are, uh, you need, well, you need OpenCV, uh, CV2, you need uh, matplotlib, and you need NumPy, all of which are readily available and can be installed with the PIP manager. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of installing different Python libraries or installing Python, but you can just look it up and there's a, you know, gazillion good tutorials on it. So, but to just explain how we're going to use this for our physics series here. Well, we start with just a uh, raw video file here, right? So this is a, you know, 120 frames per second video of me just tossing a tennis ball. So there I step off to the side and I go ahead and throw it out in front of me. Come on. There we go. Just toss the tennis ball, and then you'll see, crucially, we have that tape measure in the background for scale. So we're going to be getting our distance from combination of the pixel number and that tape measure, and then we're going to be getting our timing measurements from knowing the frame rate. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out uh, what index, to, which frame to start at, right? So one thing you can do is you can actually edit down the, uh, the video file in a video editor so that it starts at the, exactly the frame you want. Um, but it's easier to just uh, figure out which frame you want to start at and, and give the program that frame number. So I've already done that and I know it starts at frame uh, 767, uh, but let's pretend for a second that we didn't know that and let's just start at frame 1 and then set uh, IND or just for index equal to the start index. Uh, and so the, this next part is how we set the scale. And so, again, I've already done that, but we'll go over in just a second how you do that. Um, and this is, you know, so it's just, you know, bottom pixel minus top pixel divided by the distance in meters, uh, which has this whole clunky thing because the tape measure reads in feet. Uh, so it's, you know, seven feet times 12 inches per foot times 25 uh, millimeters per inch. Uh, divided by a uh, thousand millimeters per meter. So the next thing is we're going to want to go ahead and open up the video file. So we use cap for capture is equal to cv2 dot video capture of the file name. In this case, I called it toss underscore long uh, because I also did another uh, video where I tossed the tennis ball a shorter distance, so that's toss short and this is toss long, but it's just whatever you've named the file. Uh, and then the next thing is we set the frame number, or sorry, the, the next thing is we simply read in a frame, uh, and it's just 
ret comma frame is equal to cap dot read, and that will read out uh, a frame of the video. Uh, and then the next line after that is so that we can set uh, our frame number equal to whatever the index is. And we can do that. Um, right now we're going to start at frame one, but it could also be whatever we, we set it equal to. And so we're going to skip over this, this tracking bit uh, for just for now, uh, because we're going to go over how to initialize that in a minute. So next up, we get the width and the height with uh, you know, and convert those to integers so that they can be used as uh, to as indices uh, for the image. Um, we get the height and the width, and then I just go ahead and print those to the screen. So now this should already run. We just go ahead and hit run, and hopefully it doesn't throw an error. It won't really do much. Uh, yeah, there we go. It just opens the video file and tells us the the size, the pixel size, which is 720 by 1280. Okay, so we're going to skip all that for now. And so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up a while loop. And inside that while loop, we are going to just go ahead and read out frames. So we read out one frame at a time with cap.read. Uh, and the next thing is we just go ahead and add this this line here. Uh, don't worry about it. That's just so that you can quit the video read in the middle by pressing Q. Um, that's you know if 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 you if you, if you so it's just if you press Q then break the loop. Uh, that's not you, you can skip that if you want. It just makes it easier to exit if it's doing something incorrectly. And so the next thing that we're going to want to do is or going out of order, but that's because I want to show you the workflow for doing this. Uh, so we go ahead and show the image here with cv2 cv2 .im show, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say every sixth frame. So if index minus start index mod six double equals zero every sixth frame, we are going to go ahead and write the image and we're going to write it to a folder that is called frames inside of whatever directory we're in. So we have to go ahead and make that folder uh, because it won't make it for us. So let's just call that frames. And then finally, we need to remember to increment the index. OK, so now let's see what happens if we go ahead and do that. We get this video of me walking around, tossing the tennis ball. It's basically the same as when we were just viewing the file inside of the media media player. Uh, I go ahead and press Q so we don't have to watch me walk back to the camera. Okay, so now if we go into this frames folder, we can see we have a bunch of individual images that correspond to the different frames of the video. And so the nifty thing about this is the file name of each frame is the frame number. And so we just keep going through until we find the frame uh, where the tennis ball is about to leave my hand. So right about here. So it's somewhere between 763 and 769. So let's just go ahead and use 769. So what we'll do is we'll find uh, 769 here and open that with uh, the GNU image manipulation program, aka GIMP. Speaking of uh, GNU, let's make sure OBS is still working. It is. <laughs> Get that little hall of mirrors there. Okay, so now what we're going to do with this is we're going to zoom in, and we're going to we're going to check two things. One is we're going to check the frame. We're going to check the pixel coordinate of this tennis ball to initialize the tracker. So it looks like it's located at uh, we want we want the upper left corner of the tennis ball. So let's see. So let's see the center here. Uh, so down down here in the lower left of GIMP is where it shows us the pixel. So that looks like uh, 108 comma 442 is the center. If we will go to the upper left, it's uh, 99 comma 432. So let's go back to our script here. 
and we're gonna just sort of write we'll, we'll just go ahead and write that down inside of a comment uh, inside of a comment somewhere uh, and then I'll show you where to put it later so what was it 99432 yeah so we'll say 99 comma 432 and the next thing that we're going to want to do is, like I said, we want to get the size of this scale bar. So we want to measure the pick, the y coordinate of the top of this, which is looks like uh, remember the second one is the y coordinate, so it's 143, and then the not quite the bottom, but you see that we're counting up these these black. They're hard to see, but there's these black marks on there, right? And those are every 12 inches, so what, 12 times 2.4. Five, four centimeters like what is that every 25 centimeters approximately so it's one two three four five six and this bottom one is seven and so the y coordinate of that is 754 y coordinate of the top is 144 and so we'll go back to this scale now uh, yeah, so I had 70, 55 and 143, so, you know, plus or minus one pixel is fine. That's, you know, like 0 .1, a 0.1% difference. Um, and so that's where, the, that's where those numbers come from, and we type those in. Uh, and again, the other thing we're going to also want to do now that we're up here, right, is we, or I guess we change it now to start at 769 instead of 767. Okay, so now we want to start setting up the tracker. Um, but first, let's run this again now that we are at a better s starting point. See, so now it just starts uh, with the tennis ball leaving my hand. Uh, and let me let me also just see what the index is. So it uh, that that was at index 1000. Uh, so the, the other thing is we want to terminate this loop at some point before the end of the video uh, because we don't want to sit there for all, uh, you know, all the extra frames where the tennis ball is done moving through its trajectory. So uh, if we say uh, if IND is greater than 900 break, uh, this was a thousand, but it was also a little bit past the end. So uh, we'll just cheat and copy that from uh, when I wrote the script earlier that the last frame we want to keep track of is 900. Okay, so next up we need to initialize the tracker. So this is where I have to mention that the way we're doing this is actually a little bit outdated insofar as the actual state of the art of computer vision. And that's because we're doing something somewhat niche. Um, it's This is not an unusual thing to do, but typically a computer vision algorithm, uh, you want it to actually identify the object for you and then track it. And that's the way things are usually done, where it, you just tell the computer vision system to uh, identify moving objects for you without telling that without telling it where they're starting uh, but in this in our case we have one specific object we want to keep track of uh, and so that makes things a little bit simpler and helps make it a little bit more robust uh, so we're gonna do it this way and so we say we're gonna create an object called tracker uh, with the uh, I guess it's a, a class here is CV2 dot tracker mil underscore create method uh, can't remember what mil stands for but it's it's the the only the only tracker that's not depreciated in OpenCV in ter in terms of uh, this style of tracker where uh, we're we're giving it um, um, coordinates of where the object starts uh, and so the next thing is we're gonna we're gonna create this this b box uh, not not a beat box but a b box uh, and so for, that's where we're going to use these numbers up here. This Remember this 99,432, uh, the uh, upper left coordinate that we extracted uh, of where the tennis ball is right here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move that into here. And it's a little bit off from what I was using before, but that's because we're starting in a slightly different position. So then... We're gonna we're we're not gonna use uh, well I guess we are gonna use this this cap dot read but the thing that we do is uh, actually no we're not I lied uh, but what we're gonna do is is okay which is just a you know a, ch a basically a boolean to check if things are okay uh, is equal to tracker uh, which remember we created up here we created up here uh, dot init of g comma b box uh, oh sorry uh, where g is equal to the uh, black and white black and white version of the frame 
Uh, I should actually change that. We're going to just make that frame uh, because we initialize it with the, the frame, the individual image uh, of that particular you know, frame in the video, and then with the bounding box that we created up here. And so then the next thing we want to do is we're going to create a bunch of ar arrays that we're going to put our data into. So we have X positions, Y positions, and times. Uh, and then these SM X positions and SM Y positions, those just stand for smoothed. Uh, and those we're not going to use just yet. Okay, so what do we do next? Well, next we're going to need some way to visualize what's going on with that bounding box because uh, as this is now, we can run this script and I don't think it will crash. Uh, but it won't really show us anything either, uh, right? It just runs the video and you can't tell whether or not the tracker has done anything. So we're going to want to draw the tracker onto the video. So to do that, we're going to use the uh, cv2, cv2.rectangle function. Uh, and what that does is it does exactly what it sounds like. It draws a rectangle. And so the first thing we pass it is uh, the frame the of the video and then it's just x coordinate y coordinate x coordinate y coordinate uh, and so it's to do that we take the bounding box and we pass it the bounding box sub zero bounding box sub one and then the second uh, set of numbers in the bounding box are the height width and height of the bounding box not the lower right coordinates uh, so then for the lower right coordinates we have to do zero you know b box sub zero plus b box sub two and then b box sub one plus b box sub three for the y coordinate uh, and then the rest of the parameters uh, we're going to make it green so you know this is an rgb list so zero uh, 0 red, 255 green, and 0 blue, and then we're going to give it a line width of 2 there. Uh, and then uh, I almost forgot the uh, kind of important thing there is we're going to do um, tracker.update, uh, and again we're going to switch it to frame. Uh, the reason it says G in all those is you can you can use OpenCV to separate out uh, the just the green channel, just the red channel, just the blue channel, or just the green channel of the image and because the tennis ball is uh, bright green it's a little bit easier sometimes to use just the green channel uh, but it'll work just fine with all colors so uh, let's press F5 and hope I didn't <laughs> make any mistakes here there we go well no there we don't go because it's not actually tracking <laughs> okay so let's figure out what went wrong here so okay comma b box is equal to tracker dot update frame well the easiest way to check that is actually just to delete all of these and then to go back press run quit and then go in here and see is it initializing to the correct place uh, and that's why is that it's not initializing to quite the right pixel so it looks like we're initializing to lower than we need to be, so it's trying to track the wrong area. So to fix that, we just need to move up uh, a few pixels. So we'll just change that to 400, and then we'll see how that works. <laughs> Still not cooperating. Well, folks, that's embarrassing. There's two ways I can fix this. One is I can just go back to the values I was using before. Uh, the other is I can re-record this. Oh, so now we're too high. So we, we need it to be exactly in the middle of that. So 415. Thirty. Let's make that. Let's make that, let's expand that to the size of 50, 50, and then we'll move it up another five pixels.
Well, let's try switching it back to just the green channel. Like I was saying, because that does make it quite a bit easier for it to track. Nope. Well, I swear, I swear it was working. Um, all right, well, we'll just cheat and open up the values that I was using before. And rather than futz about with uh, the numbers that we extracted, we'll just use the ones I was using before. Uh, but you, you do see how you can get those numbers, where you just look at the frame and check the pixel number. Uh, but I previously had very carefully picked out these uh, pixel values in order to maximize the chance of it actually working. Uh, nope. Well, that's embarrassing, folks. Let's watch Erica debug the code. Uh, it's exactly the same. There we go. All right. It's that we were one. F we were, I, I just needed to uncomment <laughs> this one line because we were one frame off. All right. So, well, it's always good to be able to showcase the debugging process in addition to uh, how things work when they're working. So let's go ahead and close the. Uh, let's go ahead and close the cheater code and go back to our script that we're actually running. So let's run that again. So now you can see it initializes with the box right on the tennis ball and then the box actually follows the tennis ball the way it's supposed to. It just requires updating the frame in the correct order. Uh, so there is actually a reason there is actually a reason for this line right here where it says cap.read uh, even though it does it once up here already. Okay, so what do we want to do next? Well, next we want to actually make use of that data. So to do that, we are going to append our X positions and Y positions list and append our times list, right? So to append the times list, we just append it with the index minus the start index divided by 120. Uh, change the comment there it, it's we're running at 120 frames per second so the timestamp for any given frame is equal to the frame number divided by 120 and then we just subtract off the start index so that our times start at zero which makes our lives more convenient when we're plotting the data at the end and so well that's all fine and good but uh well what else do we want to do with that well we're going to want to do all this stuff down here. Uh, so to start with, let me go ahead and just uh, uncomment these lines. So output.release and cap.release, um, those just actually, we don't need output.release just yet. Cap.release just releases the frame. And it makes it, you don't have to do that, uh, it, but it just makes it cleaner. It makes sure that uh, OpenCV actually closes the video file. Uh, Okay, but the next thing we want to do is we want to use NumPy to save the data, right? So we're generating this data, this times and x positions and y positions. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say because it, it's it's maybe a little bit obvious, but uh, to get the x to get the y positions, uh, you just take the coordinate of the bounding box. Uh, so the same as we were using to plot the positions here, uh, except we divide the second, you know. Uh, b box sub 1 plus b box sub 3 divided by 2. Um, you could honestly just omit this second part uh, and you would just get the, the upper left corner instead of the center and it, as, but as long, so as long as everything is offset it would be fine. Uh, and then you divide that by the scale factor that we found up here uh, by looking at the pixel number. And so then you just use different indices, right? You use the, you know, uh, zero, you know, zero index. So the first entry in the in the list uh, is the x coordinate and index sub one. The second entry is the y coordinate, um, and then you add the third and fourth respectively to get the center rather than the upper left. 
And so then we're going to want to save all three of those, times, y positions, and x positions, uh, into a CSV file. And we're just going to use numpy to do that. I just use numpy.savetext, and they say drop.csv, or I guess I should t call this call this toss.csv, um, and delimiter uh, uh, as a comma, because we're doing a comma-separated value. That's what CSV stands for. Uh, so let's do that real quick, just so that we have the data in a usable format. And this way, if, if you want, at this point, if you want to stop using Python and switch over to MATLAB or Octave or anything else you'd like, you can. Uh, so now if we go back to uh, our folder where we're running the script, we can see we have this uh, CSV file and it uh, is a little bit uh, unwieldy. Um, and in fact, it, it uh, you know, it has some weird display formatting here, but the data is all here. It's uh, for whatever reason, doesn't always want to show it, but the, you know, there, there's our data, right? We can see three rows uh, and a gazillion columns because that's just the way that it <laughs> decides to save it. Uh, and at that point, we could just plot this in Excel if we wanted to, um, but because there's perfectly good plotting libraries available for Python, uh, we're going to do that instead. So first off, we'll go ahead and make a subplot, so plt.subplot. Uh, and then the first thing we're going to do is just plot the y positions. And so let's just make sure that works real quick. Just do plt.plot times positions. Oh, <laughs> I already made a mistake because I'm so accustomed to MATLAB slash Octave. Uh, so we have to do plt.show. Uh, and there's our data. All right. Um, and so next up, is just some sort of housekeeping. So x label, y label, plt.xlabel, plt.y label, and very similar formatting to MATLAB slash Octave. Uh, and then we're going to do another subplot, plt.subplot 2, 1, 2. Uh, and then on that one, we're going to plot the x positions. And oh, they're not quite ready for the fits yet. <laughs> and that will let us visualize those. And go ahead and place the X label, the Y label there. Uh, although X, it's weird to say Y label X position, but uh, you know, them's coordinate systems for you, or at least the naming conventions thereof. All right, so now we pretty much have what we wanted, right? We have our data, which is the uh, vertical and horizontal position uh, of that tennis ball moving through the video as a function of time for every single frame in the video. And we can go a bit further and we can use the NumPy uh, fitting library to do polynomial fits. So um, say, you know, NP or NumPy uh, dot polyfit of times comma positions comma two and that will tell it to do a second order polynomial, aka a parabola. And then we can tell it to plot that parabola with this command here, which is a little bit unwieldy, but it's just, you know, multiplying the uh, times, the times array, uh, you know, times array squared times the, you know, first coefficient plus times to the first power times the second plus uh, the third coefficient as a constant offset. Uh, and then likewise, for the uh, x position, we can do it with uh, just uh, you know a straight line, uh, where we just go ahead and do. Uh, oh, where's the line? I'm looking. For, oh, there it is. Uh, we just create another fit, uh, and this time we use uh, first order polynomial. Uh, so x times comma x positions comma one instead of y positions comma two. So we want a second order polynomial for the vertical position, but only a first order for the horizontal position. Uh, and then we can just print out the coefficients so that we can look at it. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, pretty well covers how to use the OpenCV library. Uh, the rest of the analysis is more about how to use the plotting routines. Uh, and this is going to be a little bit off because we include that bounce at the end. Uh, but you can see we get uh, 
uh, it gets 8.247 so let me actually uh, reduce the uh, index a little bit uh, so that uh, do 8 uh, say 870 uh, I just want to get a little bit closer to 9.8 even though we're gonna still be off we can do better we can do better than 8.2 uh, yeah there we go 9 926 9 that's not that's not too bad uh, even though gravity is actually 9.8 meters per second um, but yeah that'll that should give you an idea of how to use the library uh, there's there's some other stuff in here uh, that uh, we're not showing um, you know let me just uncomment it uh, real quick uh, so that we can showcase what it does but uh, it's not terribly complicated um, here is we're gonna these two lines are gonna put the text on there so CVT CV2 dot put text um, you know frame comma and then this long thing that puts together the uh, you know it's base it just makes sure that it has consistent formatting uh, for the timestamp but it's just a you know basically just you know num to str uh, but in a more uh, verbose way to get the the formatting consistent uh, and then you know font size and all those fun little parameters uh, and then up here is something a little bit more complicated where I said we're 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 creating these uh, these uh, s these smoothed x and y positions uh, and then we're plotting those um, as a function of position um, that really isn't so necessary uh, to be honest but uh, it's it's sort of nice to have uh, so see if we run that now then we'll get that nice blue line sort of uh, tracing tracing out behind the tennis ball uh, and that's smoothed out just to make it look a little bit nicer um, and get, give you a better idea what's going on. Uh, this data is not smooth though uh, and uh, remember though if you if, if you ever want to use the data you just say you can just save it to a CSV with that numpy dot save text function uh, and then you can plot it in whatever other system you'd like or open open up Python at a later date and uh, plot the data there. Um, but that'll hopefully give you an idea. Uh, the key things are, you know, use this tracker.create and then give it the bounding box and then initialize it with that bounding box. And then uh, every every frame you need to make sure to use the, uh, oh, where is it? No, the, so many lines. The, uh, oh yes, you know, okay, comma, you know, you know bound, update the bounding box with tracker, you know, B box is equal to tracker dot update or okay comma B box okay it's just a status flag and then you know use that bounding box as the uh, position of the object of the object and then you can save that to you know a append that data into some arrays and sa save those arrays and manipulate them however you would like so anyways that's a very much not an exhaustive tutorial on how to use OpenCV. Uh, you could spend years of your life learning how to use it. It's a very, very, uh, it, it's it, it's a very, very featureful library. It's got a lot to it. Um, I'm not really an expert in computer vision, uh, but I know enough to do these little things here. So uh, you know, as usual, if you made it to the end and have questions, uh, feel free to comment them, and I'll answer them whenever I get a chance. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful.